Today's video is going to focus on creating categories. It's going to be a beginner friendly tutorial where we just step through creating categories for, I guess we'll go with books. Why not? The first thing we'll need to do is actually create our books. So for this, I'll say Rails G Scaffold. Let me screen this so you can see it. Rails G Scaffold book. Give each book a title and a body of type text. I'm not going to give it a category right away just so that you can see how to add this to an existing model. So now we have these books and we want to give these books a category. So we need to generate the category model. For this, we'll do a Rails G scaffold for a category and we'll give each category a name. Now we're giving it a name without a colon because by default it's of type string to begin with. So you don't have to worry about that. Now that we've created our categories and our books, we now need to say that a book belongs to a category. To do this, we can type Rails G migration, add category to book, and make sure to capitalize the first letter of each one of these. Or I guess we could say two books. And then we can say category colon belongs underscore two, and that'll add our belongs to relationship. Now we can run a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. And then we can run a rails s command to start the server. Now we'll come over to config routes and I'll bump up the font size a bit. And we're just going to set the root of the application to be the books controller and the index action. That's just so that we have a root page to go to. So now if I try to go to localhost port 3000, it'll take me to the books. So I'll just go ahead and I'll create a book. I'll say my first book with text here, and then I'll click create. And you can see here that we're getting a SQLite constraint exception, not null. And that's because when we generated this uh, category setup in our last one here, we added a foreign key, which tells it that it can't be null. So you have a database level validation here that just checks to make sure that each book does in fact have a category. So one way we can fix it to not throw an error like this is if I move this over, we can come over to our models and our category.rb. I'll move this over. We can actually just say that this validates the, uh, the name with the presence of true and a uniqueness of true. This means that a category needs to have a name. A, uh, it has to be there and it has to be unique. So you can't have a blank category. So that allows us to ensure that our category has a name. We can do a similar thing in our book to make sure that our book has a category. So what we can do is we can say this validates the uh, category underscore ID with a presence of true. And now if we save this, we come over here and we try to create a new book, test case, you'll see that now we get an error that says the category can't be blank. So now let's try and get this category to stop being blank so that we can actually create a book. First thing we need to do is tell the Rails application that a category has many books and that a book has uh, or belongs to one category. So inside of our category.rb, we'll say this has many books. And then inside of our book.rb, we can say this belongs to a category. And then we can go ahead and save that. But okay, now we have the models set up. Let's come into our books controller. And in here at the bottom, we want to tell it that we're okay with taking in a category underscore ID because we're gonna be passing in the category ID as a parameter. And this just tells it to permit that parameter. We can now come into our views, books, and our form. And in here, all we wanna do is, I guess, below the body maybe, we can add another div. And then for this div, we'll create a form label that just has the word category in it. And then we'll set the display to block just so it matches everything else. And then we wanna do a form.select for the category ID. And this actually is a little bit more advanced than most forms. So you actually have to pass in an options underscore four underscore select, which is gonna take uh, just one argument for the sake of what we're doing, which is gonna be at categories. And we don't actually have this at categories defined yet. So let's come over to our books controller. 
And inside of our new action, we need our categories defined, but we also want to use them in our index and show. So because we're going to use this in a couple of different places, I'm going to set categories and in index show new edit. So actually what I'm going to do is just say before action set categories. And I'll save that and we'll just come down here and we'll just say def set categories. And then we'll say at categories equals category dot all. And that'll give it to us on all of our pages inside of our books controller. So now we can come back to our form because we have our at categories. And now we need to call a Ruby method called collect. And I have a page open for this. Basically what collect is gonna do if I scroll in. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna invoke whatever block you pass it. So in this case, it's passing a block where it has a variable of X and then you're just returning X plus the uh, exclamation mark. So you get like A exclamation mark, B exclamation mark, C exclamation mark. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass it the category and then we're just going to return an array that has the category name comma the category ID because the way that these selects work is they want the name that you're displaying in the select and then the ID that you're gonna be passing to the controller. So we're gonna take this collect and we're just gonna pass it a block. And in here, we'll just say cat for the category name. We'll do the array, just like we talked about. Then we'll do category.name comma category.id. And once we're done with that, we should be good to refresh the books page and you can see that our category is appearing, but we don't have any categories in it. And that's because we haven't made any categories. So let's go ahead and let's create a couple of default categories just in case we want to use them in the future. So we'll come into our DB and our seeds file. And we'll just say category.create, give it a name like fiction, and we'll create another one called nonfiction, and then we'll create one that's called biography. So we'll just create three different categories and then come over here and stop our server and just do a rails db colon uh, seed command, which will run that file. And we can do a rails s command to start our server again. Now, if we refresh, you'll see that we have those three showing up here. If you want this to be uh, in alphabetical order, you can come into your books controller, scroll down to the bottom right here and just say order and you can order it by the name which should change it to an alphabetical order. So now we have biography, fiction, and nonfiction. So let's create um, my first book. It's a fiction and we'll switch the category to fiction and click create book. So you can see it created the book here. And if we scroll up, you can see that it inserted the values in, and one of the values is the category ID, which is going to be your last question mark. So your category ID was set to an ID of one. So I guess fiction is our ID of one. So let's come over to our book partial now, right here. So below the title, let's just do another P tag slash P. And then in here we can just do strong and we'll do category and we'll give the book dot category dot name. If you don't have the name attached to there, it's just going to give you some nonsense, but this way it gives you the actual name. Now, if you wanted to link to the category, you can just change this to a link to book.category.name, comma, and then just book.category. Because again, we generated a whole scaffold for the category, so this will work just like any other model. So if I click on this, it'll take us to the category show page. If you want your category show page to show all of the books it has, you can come into your categories folder, your category partial, we'll full screen this, and we can change this to say category instead of name is going to be the category name. Let's make this an H2 just so it's a little bit bigger. And now we can come down here and we can do something like category dot books dot each do book. And then we can come in here, do a P tag. We'll close the P tag and then we can do something like uh, book dot title. Do a pipe and then we can do link to view book and then just the book. Then we can exit out of full screen and we can click on the fiction again and it'll take us to the fiction category which has a link to the book it's displaying. If we go back to the overall categories page here, you can now see that each category has the book inside of it 
uh, with a link to it as well as a link to show that category. So you can see how you could set something like this up to, I don't know, give you categories in your nav bar if you wanted it to like organize your drop downs or how you could just do like categories for your blog posts, maybe different genres for your reviews. So this is pretty powerful. Uh, if you're interested in the many to many version where you have many categories or maybe you have many tags, then let me know in the comments and I'll try to cover that in a future video. If you're looking to make it so that only an admin can create a category, I would suggest by starting with my tutorial that covers adding user roles, including the admin role, to your device users so that you can restrict stuff like this to an admin only account. You can do that by watching the video that's on the screen right now.